Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our wonderful Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our meditation this morning is indeed based on the gospel lesson that's just been read to you, a teaching of the Lord Jesus for all of his disciples. In the name of Jesus, many of you remember the late comedian Rodney Dangerfield. He made a name for himself by having a phrase that he often repeated, I get no respect around here. Well, he isn't alone when it comes to people wanting respect. We sometimes feel that we just don't get any respect at all. Children at school may feel that they have no respect from their teachers, classmates. As adults, we may feel it at, at work, maybe sometimes even here at the church, which is sad. But in a way, all of us have this kind of lack of getting respect. I remember the old stunt man, Evil Knievel. You remember him? Oh, he would dress up in his fancy white dudes, put on his motorcycle helmet, and then he'd rev it up, and up a ramp he'd go, and he'd jump over something. I remember one time he jumped over five buses at one time. I saw that on TV. Oh, and then one time he tried to jump the Grand Canyon. Wasn't too successful on that one. Lots of broken bones for him, but he always kept coming back. He wanted recognition. Or how about those folks who interrupt public meetings? who shout the speakers down. Happened recently in the Senate confirmation hearings of Supreme Court appointee Judge Kavanaugh. Yes, people resort to some kinds of bizarre ways of getting recognition. It seems safe to say that we are concerned about getting respect from other people but what about the respect of God? You know, God does respect us because he made us and uh, he cares for us, preserves us. But how do we get that respect that makes us worthy of spending eternal life with him in heaven? You know, as you read this text, that's kind of the question that's underneath that whole thing. May the Holy Spirit be present with us this morning as we look at our gospel lesson, using as our theme, how to get respect in God's sight. Our first thought is that God's respect is not something that we earn. In the text, we find the disciples arguing among themselves. And the question was, who should be the greatest, the most important, the first ones? You see, we tend to be like the disciples as well. We often think that the one who is being served, that's the greatest one. We think of, maybe we become even a little bit jealous of the CEOs of large companies and the salaries that they make and the perks that are theirs, like using the company airplane for their personal use. So our problem often becomes that we would rather be served than serve, thinking that's the way to be great, to get respect. Now that problem can play out itself this way is happening today in our society. It's very difficult to find volunteers to do community projects. It's also difficult here at the church to find people who will take office, who will give leadership to the church, who will volunteer for various projects around the church and for jobs that need to be done. 
It would often seem that in the church we're quite satisfied just to be church members and enjoy the benefits of church membership. But don't ask me to get involved. Don't ask me to get involved. And even when we serve, so often our motive is one of self-serving. We do it for personal recognition. Or maybe it'll lead to some kind of a business opportunity. And of course, when we do lots of servant things, especially here at the church, we wind up thinking, oh my, I'm doing more and more than so-and-so. Or we think, boy, I'm sure doing my share on this project and, and probably more than I really need to. You see, when our thinking goes that way, it reflects prideful thought. We got it all wrong if we think we can earn God's respect by our serving much, by our working hard. Certainly that wasn't the way of Jesus. In the verses just prior to our text, Jesus had performed a miracle and the people were gathering around him. They wanted to praise him. But that's not what Jesus wanted. He just kind of exited. His big deal was that he wanted to teach his disciples about his upcoming passion, how he would be betrayed, how he would be put on the cross, and how he would rise again on the third day. Now these disciples, instead of soaking it all in, they start this arguing among each other as to who should be the most important. So the first step in getting God's respect is to admit honestly that we just don't measure up. That often we're doing something totally different than what Jesus wants us to be doing. We need to admit our sin, our sinfulness. That's where we begin in gaining God's respect. That brings us to our second point. God's respect is a gift that has been earned for us by Jesus Christ. God's respect is something that has been earned for us by Jesus. And that's what Jesus was trying to talk about with the disciples. You see, Jesus earned it by completely humbling himself. He went all the way. He went to the cross. And there he made the payment completely. He did that in order to make the payment for sinful pride or many other sins. Our sins were indeed laid upon Jesus Christ. And then he shows that the Father has accepted his payment with his wonderful, victorious resurrection on the third day. That's where we get respect. It's in what Jesus accomplished for us before God. Well, what happens? When you and I believe that Jesus Christ died and rose for us, then we can be sure that God respects us as heaven-worthy people. But how does that happen? Jesus brings about a great exchange. Jesus takes our smallness and he gives us his greatness. Jesus takes our sinfulness upon himself and gives us his holiness. Think of the gift that is given us in this great exchange. You see, the disciples, they had it absolutely wrong. They were completely off base when they were arguing who was the most important. Rather, it is in Jesus and what he accomplished that makes us great in the eyes of God. Well, I haven't really told you anything this morning that you don't, didn't already know. 
maybe said it a little bit differently. You know, it's really that old, old story that each one of us needs to hear and we need to believe. But that leads us to a third point. Once we have respect of God, that respect needs to demonstrate itself in our lives. Jesus gives us a way in which that can be done. He says, if anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and the servant of all. This simply means willing to be the least, the smallest, the last one. Instead of insisting on being the number one so that we can get all the recognition. That's not what it means when Jesus says, if anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and the servant of all. That means being willing to serve people that are rather hard to serve. You know, we think of individuals who have had absolutely every break in life and all they succeeded in doing was making a big mess of their lives. It's kind of hard to become a servant to them. What it also means is to be willing to serve without recognition or praise and so passing up any ideas of greatness the way the world sees greatness. I think of some of the church dinners that I've gone to and there in the back of the kitchen there stands a grandma washing dirty dishes for several hours as they bring the dishes to her. Or recently I saw an elderly gentleman from our congregation sitting on a pail out in our parking lot, pulling out the weeds and the cracks. He wasn't doing it to receive that recognition. He was doing it just like the lady that we're in, in that kitchen, doing it because they love their savior and they love their church. That's the greatness of the Lord being demonstrated. We also demonstrate it when we stand up for those who can't reward us for our service that's what Jesus was getting at in the last verses of the text when he takes a little child and sets him right in the middle of the arguing disciples. And then he says, if you receive this little child, a child that is not going to give you any recognition, any rewards, then you are welcoming me. And more importantly, you're welcoming the one who sent me, the Father in heaven. God respects our service for Jesus' sakes and graciously rewards us by calling us his children. What an honor to be called one of his children and to receive his blessings as his children. Dr. Herman Gockel, a well-known devotional writer in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, in one of his devotions talked about a rich widow who had given large sums of money to her charities and to the mission of her church. And now a quote. One day she decided to take a trip to visit some of the mission projects her money had so generously endowed. She visited a hospital where wonderful help was given to needy natives. She stopped an orphanage where little children of the street were cared for. She went to a leper colony where a loving nurse was treating those who were suffering from this disease. She commented, she commented more to herself than to the host, my, I wouldn't do that for a million dollars. The nurse who was treating a patient answered, Neither would I. That nurse was reflecting the respect of God. She was doing it not for money. She was doing it because she loved her Savior. And she wanted to be of service 
to those who had need of her. And so we find that respectability comes in the service of Christ to us, that we find this secret, the way to get respect in God's sight. May God enable each one of us to be that kind of servant who follow the example of Jesus, giving of ourselves without concern for recognition or praise. God grant that special blessing to us. Things will go better in our lives and things will go better here at the church as well. For Jesus' sake, amen. We rise. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We turn to page 229 to sing the Te Deum Laudamus, uh, which is Latin, which says, we praise you, O Lord. Um, it serves as our hymn of praise, but it also serves as our confession of faith. And we want to call attention that you watch for the numbering of the verses carefully. We sing the Te Deum.
At this time, we will gather the offering for today. You may be seated. <clears throat> 